Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing No Quest for the Wicked by Shanna Swenson. This is the sixth book in the Enchanted Ink series, I think. So this series is like urban fantasy meets chiclet. Um, and this particular book focuses on a quest throughout Manhattan to find this stone that is incredibly dangerous. If you have not been reading the series, I definitely recommend going and starting with book one, Enchanted Ink. Um, otherwise, you're going to kind of get lost. And also, this review will spoil the previous books in the series, particularly the ending of book five. So, if you haven't been reading them, go do that first. Because um, spoilers for the previous books. Book five was like this bombshell of like everything happening and wrapping up all the previous evil villain storylines that have been happening uh, with the spell works and Philip and Idris. We find out that Owen's parents were magical villains. They were evil and trying to take over the world and so that became public and everybody knows about Owen's parents and so Owen is not exactly high in public opinion right now. There are wizards who are literally spending their lives going around and following him everywhere to make sure he's not doing anything evil. This is particularly frustrating because Owen lost all of his magic completely. He is now magical immune like Katie. Magic doesn't even work on him anymore. That's how little magic he has. He is empty. So we've got Owen who seems like he should be incredibly frustrated and if you're looking at Owen very carefully like Katie is you can start to see it uh, grind under him but he's putting up this facade of like everything is okay it's fine even though I don't have magic it's awesome because I finally get to go look at this one spell book that is incredibly dangerous and nobody with any magic is allowed anywhere near it but because I'm an immune now and because I have training in how to be a wizard I can go look at these spells and decipher them and he has all this uh, background training in foreign ancient languages. So Owen starts looking at this book and one of the pages starts changing and it seems to be for the location of this one gem called the Eye of the Moon, which is incredibly dangerous. It'll amplify any wizard's magic. And also set them on this path for world domination. Like anybody gets their hand on, hands on it, starts becoming a little bit evil. It seems to pry on people's darker intentions and pull them out. Um, so when it appears to be that the stone is in Manhattan, Katie and Owen, the two magical immunes, are basically the only people who can get close to this gem and it wouldn't affect them. So Katie and Owen start on this quest all throughout Manhattan following these clues to where the stone is and trying to stop other people from getting it. And it's this crazy, insane journey all throughout New York. And as they're going on this quest, more and more people start noticing them um, and becoming involved. The whole thing just kind of snowballs and becomes bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier and all kinds of people are involved. Um, We've got Merlin, who created the stone, who's trying not to be involved, but also knows exactly how dangerous it is, and he's trying to, like, call the shots from the sidelines, literally with, like, the cell phone calling it in. Um, Katie's grandmother thinks that this is the perfect time to make a visit to New York, and of course she's a witch, um, so she's like, no, something bad's gonna happen, I'm not gonna leave your side, and Katie's like, ah, you cannot be around the stone. Um, so things get crazy and complicated. It's definitely one of the funnier entries in this book and it definitely takes a lot of the previous people and groups and places that we've seen and like remixes them in this one. This book also takes place entirely in one day so while Katie and Owen are spending a lot of time together there's kind of some more pressing issues and we get stuck into the Katie and Owen having to save the day and not having time for their relationship thing. But it's also something that they're realizing and trying to work on. Like, Owen notices that something is weird with Katie and the truth is that she's just been bored at her job. Katie's been the marketing director for MSI and she 
doesn't really enjoy marketing that much and also it's not very fun when you are marketing for like a near monopoly like there's no competition now so it's not that exciting and so she's literally sitting at her desk doing an hour of work a day and then spending the other seven uh twiddling her thumbs basically and she wants something more challenging she misses running around and doing the crazy things so they do have small moments where they kind of check in and talk um, in between where things calm down, Owen's like, so can we solve your problem? Like, what can we do? Um, also Owen's been completely in work mode where he is obsessed with this book and trying to learn everything because he's convinced he's going to get his magic back and he's only going to have a limited time with this book. So every second he can with the book, he's been in there studying it. Um, but Katie isn't immune. She could be in the room with him, but she doesn't have that background or interest the way he does. So she's like, okay, just do your thing. <laughs> I also just, I love these two characters. Like, the very beginning of the book, like page one, is Katie trying to sneak into there before office hours at like 7 a.m. And Owen's still in there. And Katie's like, did you go home? Do you know that it's breakfast time? And Owen's like, actually, I did go home. But I came back to work super early in the morning and I thought it was lunch time now. Because when you start at 2 a.m., you know. Um, so I love the way their dynamic and their relationship works. And this is definitely um, a fun little side quest. Um, it is not one of my favorite books in the series, though. I only ended up giving it 4 out of 5 stars. So that is probably all I can talk about this book without spoiling it. So if you haven't read book 6 yet, I definitely recommend reading it. I love the entire series. Um, if you have read book 6, then I'm going to do spoilers because we're at that point in the series where either you've been reading it or you haven't, kind of. Um, so, book six. All, all the people come back in this book. Uh, we get to see Rod join in their quest. He becomes important because he's one of the few people who knows Owen and trusts Owen and agrees to the condition that we have a magical tranquilizer dart. If you get out of hand, I am going to stick you with a tranquilizer dart. Um, and just completely knock you out and take you out of commission. And of course, nobody else is going to agree to that with Owen not being trusted in the magical world. But because Owen and Rod have been best friends since forever, Rod is like the only one who can do this and agree to do it. Um, and would also not bring up suspicions. Like, Merlin created the stone so he cannot go looking for it. Um, that would be a PR disaster. And also... The stone was already affecting Merlin when he created it, um, so he definitely cannot be in contact with it again. Like, it was already starting to work on him, so it's already got, like, its latches into him. Um, so this is, like, seriously, seriously dark stuff happening here. Um, potential for the whole world falling apart. Um, so I love seeing Rod step up and getting to, like, be part of saving the day. Because he is a really strong, powerful wizard, um, and he cares about everything just as much as the other two, but he always gets overlooked because he's a personnel rather than magical development. Although Katie and Owen's jobs do not directly translate to save the world either, but they still get wrangled into all of these. Um, I also love seeing Katie's grandmother show up. She just randomly shows up and announces, I'm here, you're late for picking me up. Um, also, she's just schooling people left and right. She's like, these people in Manhattan have no manners. Um, she refuses to leave Katie's side. She's incredibly loyal. And she's also got some strong magic in there. In fact, there's a moment where Owen has to teach Granny how to make, how to do a spell because he can't do it because he doesn't have magic. And the two different approaches that they have to magic starts becoming apparent. Um, but also, he's able to, like, break it down and she's able to do the spell, which was awesome. Also, you know, this incredibly dangerous stone has been attached to an elfin brooch, which makes whoever wears it invincible. So that's also a fun little twist on this. Um, as if things weren't crazy enough, it got even more complicated. And then that brings in all the elves into the story. And apparently there are two different factions of elves. There is the elf lord Sylvester, um who would definitely not be somebody you want the stone into his hand. Um, like, he would take out the wizards if he could. Um, and is also not that great with his elves. Like, he keeps them together as much as to, like, keep a strong 
number, but not because he seems to be particularly concerned about the welfare of his uh, people. He just wants the power aspect. The whole thing just got insane and crazy. Um, and I loved it. I loved the kind of chaos that was happening in this. We also have Earl trying to avoid Sylvester because he's undercover, so we can't let Sylvester know that he is actually trying to undermine him, but Sylvester is so oblivious that he, like, doesn't even remember Earl, and he constantly tells Earl to, like, shut up, like, that's a running thing in here, and Earl's just, like, so traumatized that whenever anybody allows him to speak, he shows, he's so shocked because he thinks he's gonna get shot down. Thor, he's going after... Not the stone itself, but the elves owe him money because he made the brooch and never got paid for it. So he demands that he has either the brooch back or payment. And he's running around with a battle axe and he's like crazy maniac. And then of course the best part of this is that the person who ends up with the eye is Mimi, who has no idea what she has or what to do with it, only that it is shiny, expensive, and it seems to make people do whatever she wants. Like, people already do what she wants because she's so bossy um, and has such high up jobs and now she's marrying this billionaire, I think? Billionaire, millionaire, something like that. Um, so when people just start acting like they want to help her and want to do what she's saying, she like just gets off on that so much that she, she becomes even more dangerous. Like, Katie describes it as like the way that the eye is supposed to happen. The things that the eye is supposed to do to somebody, that's Mimi on a normal day. Um, so her with the eye is like even more crazy. So if you have been reading the series, let me know in the comments below what, you, what you're thinking of it. Do you enjoy book six? So peace out. I love you guys. And keep reading.